Bismillah walhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawalah wa ba'd How would you like it if you were so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he promised if anyone were to show hostility towards you he would defend you how would you like to be so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He would protect you from falling into sin? He would cause you to only look at those things which please Him and hear only those things which please Him and He would protect you from doing with your hands and your legs that which displeases Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. How would you like a promise from Allah Azza wa Jal that He loves you so much that if you were to ask of Him anything, He would most certainly give it to you. And if you were to seek His protection from something, He would most certainly protect you from it. This is something which can be attained. And we learn about it from that authentic hadith which was narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu arba a beautiful hadith that we should remember so that we could apply Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu arba says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah azza wa jalla said so it's what we call a hadith qudsi the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam is relating to us what Allah Azza wa Jalla Himself has said. What did He say? He said, "Man adali waliyan faqad adantuhu bil harb." Whoever takes one of my close friends, or whoever shows hostility towards one of my close friends, one of my awliya, whoever shows hostility towards one of my close friends, then. Let him take notice of war from me. That is, Allah Azza wa Jal has declared war <coughs> against those who show hostility towards his friends. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. May he make us amongst his awliya. Who are the awliya? Alladina amanu wa kanu yattaqoon, as Allah Azza wa Jal says. Those who believe and they fear Allah. That is, they keep their duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the hadith continues. And it is as though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, those awliya of mine, that wali of mine, whom I will defend against anyone who is hostile towards him, this is who that person is. So then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ مَفْتَرَتُهُ عَلَيْهِ So here's the first thing that we can do in order to attain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a matter of fact, the best thing that we can do, ما تقرب إلي عبدي بشيء أحب إلي So the most beloved thing to Allah, through which we can gain closeness to Him, through which we can gain closeness to Him, is to carry out our obligations towards Him. So, so those things which Allah made fard, which He made wajib upon us, when we do those things, we are gaining closeness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or we are gaining closeness to Allah through the things that He loves the best. Your five daily prayers, Allah loves that you gain closeness to Him through them more than anything else. Paying your zakah, similarly. Fasting the month of Ramadan, going for hajj, doing anything which Allah has declared or His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has declared wajib, farb this is the most beloved th thing through which you can gain closeness to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ This is the part we're looking for as well The second thing Allah Azza wa Jalla says as the Prophet ﷺ relates from him that my slave continues to gain closeness to me through the nawafil, through the voluntary acts of worship. 
until such time that I love him. So then, we continue to gain closeness to Allah Azza wa Jal through the nawafil, and that will put us in a position where Allah will love us. An nawafil. What is meant by an nawafil? What is meant by an nawafil are all those acts of worship that we carry out other than the obligatory acts. So, for example, we have the salah, which is an obligatory act, the five daily prayers. Besides those five daily prayers, there are many other voluntary prayers that we can offer. You know, all of them come with other great benefits. We are just mentioning the one, and that is that we continue to gain closeness to Allah Azza wa Jalla through these prayers until Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala loves us. So there are Sunan al Rawatib, those voluntary prayers which are offered either before or after the fara'id, the compulsory prayers, like the two rak'ah before Salat al-Fajr, which by the way, the Prophet ﷺ said about them, Rak'at al-Fajri khayrun min dunya wa ma fiha. Those two rak'ah only, the sunnah before Fajr, he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are greater in value in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal than this entire world and all that it contains. Did you know that the Prophet ﷺ also said about the Sunan before and after Dhuhr? He said, whoever adheres to four rak'ah, okay, he's talking about extra, over and above the Dhuhr prayers, before Salat al-Dhuhr and four rak'ah after Salat al-Dhuhr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect him from the hellfire. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whoever prays twelve rak'ah, in the day, throughout the day, that is besides the fara'id, over and above the obligatory prayers, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build for that person a home in Jannah. Imagine, those of us who are not praying those extra 12 rak'ah every day, the two before Fajr, the four before Dhuhr, two after Dhuhr, two after Maghrib, and two after Isha, count them, there are 12. By not doing that, we have forfeited a home in Jannah. Ay wallah, a home. In any event, a nawafid. There are so many other nawafid. Salat al duha Tahiyyat al-Masjid. The two rak'ah you pray when you come into the masjid before sitting down. Two rak'ah after the wudu. And the list goes on. as fasting is an obligation during the month of Ramadan. But outside the month of Ramadan, we have many, many opportunities to fast as well. Imagine that if you fast after having fasted the month of Ramadan, if you observe six voluntary fasts any time during the month of Shawwal, after the day of Eid, then it will be recorded for you as though you fasted an entire year. Imagine that you fast the day of Arafah. For that you will attain two years worth of forgiveness. Imagine that you fast the day of Ashura, the tenth day of Dhul Hijjah. You will attain one entire year of forgiveness. Imagine that you fast three days every month. Three voluntary days, every month. Say the 13th, 14th, and 15th of the Islamic calendar. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, it will be written for you as though you fasted that whole month. And so forth. As zakah is an obligation, a type of charity which we pay. What about as sadaqah? Giving charity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Jalla wa ala promises that whatever we spend for His sake, He subhanahu wa ta'ala will return it back to us. Allah <coughs> Azza wa Jal, I mean, He encourages us to spend in His cause so that our rewards will be limitless. مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا فَيُضَاعِفَهُ لَهُ أَضْعَافًا كَثِيرًا Ya subhanallah. So, al-nawafid. These are only some of the benefits that we gain from the nawafil. One we said, gaining closeness to Allah Azza wa Jal. All those rewards you get for performing those nawafil. Now, did we ever think also that our obligatory acts are never perfect? Let's face it, when you enter into the salah, all of a sudden you wonder what the time is, so you look at your watch. All of a sudden, your pen isn't straight, so you have to fix it. All of a sudden you feel itchy, so you start scratching. Two seconds ago, you're not itchy. So your, the khushur, the concentration in your salah is diminished. Your mind is scattered. As a result of that, you will not get full marks, if you will, for that salah. But if you pray the nawafil, then 
on the day of Qiyamah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at our ibadat, whether it be the salah or other than that, if there are any shortcomings in those acts of worship, and of course we know that we have shortcomings, then Allah azza wa jal will look at our nawafil so that they can compensate for any shortcomings. This is yet another benefit. One who is regular with nawafil, voluntary acts of worship, do you think they're going to be negligent in their fara'id? Unlikely. But a person who is lazy to do voluntary acts, then eventually that laziness may lead him to leave out some of his obligatory acts as well. So, وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ I want you to live this hadith. You continue to gain closeness to Allah Azza wa Jal through these voluntary acts of worship until Allah loves you. Allah loves you, Allah will love you. وَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ Listen to what will happen if Allah Azza wa Jal loves you. وَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ وَبَصَرَهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ وَيَدَهُ الَّتِي يَبْطِشُ بِهَا وَرِجْلَهُ الَّتِي يَمْشِي بِهَا Allah Azza wa Jal says that if I love and when I love that person, then I become his seeing or his sight with which he sees, his hearing with which he hears, his hand with which he strikes, and his leg with which he walks. In other words, as I mentioned at the very beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects all of your limbs for you so that your eyes insha'Allah ta'ala will only land on th those things which are pleasing to Allah and you will do everything you can by the, he by the help of Allah Azza wa Jal and you will, you will avoid those things which are displeasing to Allah. Listening, the same thing. With your hands and your legs, the same thing. So those limbs of yours will be protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from doing that which displeases Him bi-ibnihi jalla wa ala. But that's not all. وَإِن سَأَلَنِي لَأُعْطِيَنَّهِ Ya Rabbi And how much do we need this? And if He asks of me, if He requests something of me, لَأُعْطِيَنَّهِ I shall most certainly give it to Him. Wouldn't you love that? That if you were to ask Allah, Ya Allah, grant me this. Allah Azza wa will give it to you easily. Why? Because He loves you. Why does He love you? Because not only do you keep up with your fara'id, but you try your best to do as many nawafil, voluntary acts of worship as you possibly can. وَلَئِنْ إِسْتَعَاذَنِي لَأُعِيذَنَّ And if He were to seek my protection from something, then I will most certainly protect Him. And how many a time are we asking, oh, I want to be protected from, you know, uh, being possessed and so on and so forth and all kinds of other evils and the evil eye. People are paranoid. But don't be paranoid. Become a close friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Gain closeness to Him through your nawafil so He will love you and He will be your protector bi ta'ala. Wallahi ahibbati fillah. This is one of my favorite ahadith. I'm going to repeat it so all of us remembers it. مَنْ عَادَ لِي وَلِيًّا فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ Anyone who shows hostility towards a friend of mine, let him take notice of war from me, against him. مَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَبْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ My slave does not gain closeness to me through anything more beloved to me than those things which I have made an obligation upon him. وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى وَحِبَّهِ And my slave continues to draw closer to me and draw near to me through voluntary acts of worship until such time that I love him. وَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ وَبَصَرَهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ وَيَدَهُ الَّتِي يَبْطِشُ بِهَا وَرِجْلَهُ الَّتِي يَمْشِي بِهَا And when I love him, then I become his sight through which he sees, and his hearing through which he hears, and his hand through which he strikes, and his leg by which he walks. وَإِذَا سَأَلَنِي لَأُعْطِيَنَّهِ And when he asks me for something, he asks, he asks of me, then I shall most certainly grant it to him. وَإِنِ اسْتَعَاذَنِي لَأُعِيذَنَّهِ 
And when he seeks refuge with me, when he seeks my protection, then I will most certainly grant him refuge. I will most certainly grant him protection. I beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all of us will live this hadith and not just listen to it and say, oh, how beautiful it is. It is even more beautiful and it is even more sweet when we put it into practice. May Allah Jalla wa ala grant us that strength and ability to put this hadith into practice. Hada wallahu a'lam. Sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.